Hello, my name is Josh and thanks for joining me today. Today I want to talk to you guys about the BIOS in your system. The BIOS stands for the Basic Input Output System. It is a chip on your motherboard, but it's also more than a chip. It's a program that connects everything and we're going to learn about it today. So right here, we actually have an example of a BIOS. It is this chip right here. And that is the BIOS that is the basic input output system for this Asus H97 Plus motherboard. So let's break it down. Basic, meaning the basic low level, possibly assembly language code that is going to control all of the devices on your motherboard. This could be directly talking to the sound chip or directly talking to any integrated graphics and so forth. This is some very machine level code that a program like Google Chrome may not understand, but it's eventually translated by the BIOS to the actual chip to create the lovely music or sound that you're hearing right now. Next part is input and output. This is translating the machine code of going in or out of your computer. So whenever you move your mouse up or press the A key, you're sending a string of bits to your CPU. Well, the CPU doesn't really know what to do with the letter A or the up on the mouse, unless it has some in between telling it all. Oh, the mouse device moved up, so I'm gonna tell that to the operating system. So this is the input output part of the BIOS. And it's a system because it is multiple parts. So I showed you a chip earlier, and on that chip is a program that connects other parts to it. So your sound card might have some read-only memory code that is linked to the BIOS and acts as a system. Now, all of these devices are acting as one thing to accept input and output of, out of the system. So let's get into this a little bit more. So in the early days of computers, I'm talking the 80s and 90s, the BIOS would handle all input output of the system. This is great, but you also got to consider back then there was really only like three or four different devices floating around and the stuff was pretty standardized. Nowadays, we have all kinds of different devices that do all sorts of different things. And the BIOS, it's not feasible to make one BIOS for everything. So what we do is create drivers. A driver is something that works at the operating system level. The BIOS is the standard way that Windows or Mac will talk to your components. Take for example, these two sound chips and these two network cards. These were made by different companies, but they essentially do the same thing. They output audio and they download and upload stuff from the internet. That's great and all, but Windows doesn't necessarily know how to talk to your sound chip. It doesn't know how to talk to your sound chip. It doesn't know how to talk to your network card. All Windows knows is how to talk to your BIOS. So what the BIOS does, it will accept standard communication from your operating system, such as upload this packet to this IP, and then it will translate that into machine level code that it can then send to the device. In this instance, it is the network card. So on my motherboard, I said there was a BIOS chip. On this one, we can actually remove it. And I'm gonna do that for you guys. So here's the chip, it's really tiny. And this is what's called a read-only memory chip. And it is possible to write to it, but the process is very tedious and it can only be done a certain number of times. So why would I ever want to write to the BIOS? Well, usually one of two reasons. One, it's broken. Stuff happens and maybe something on it is corrupted and we need to flash the BIOS which means to overwrite the data and put in a new program. Another reason is to update the BIOS. Take for example, you have a A320 motherboard and it supports second gen processors and you wanna go up to the third gen processors. You can actually do that with a BIOS update. And I'm talking about the AMD Ryzen 2 and then Ryzen 2 Plus. Um, with a BIOS update, you can use the same motherboard for a newer generation chip. So your BIOS is able to store some important settings about your computer. The BIOS has its own little piece of RAM. It's called NVRAM, and it is powered by a watch battery. It's usually a C2032 watch battery, and I'll have one right here to 
show as an example on this board. It's right here. It is, uh, I think, 3 volts or 1.5. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Just simple watch battery, and this will keep the system time as well as the BIOS settings. The BIOS has some settings that you can change, and this includes, but is not limited to, boot order, fan speeds, overclocking profiles, XMP settings, and RGB enabling. No, but seriously, the BIOS holds a lot of settings and there's a lot of configuration you can do. This is useful for troubleshooting or setting up just, maybe you're changing some drives in the PC and you wanna to boot to a different device. So the BIOS will store these settings and if you ever put in the wrong settings or are unable to boot with the settings that you've put in, you can actually remove the watch battery and it will clear out the settings. This will put the BIOS back to its default profile and you can reconfigure it as you will. This is often done with overclocking or perhaps you just set a wrong fan speed and you want to change it without going through all the settings. Also very useful if you have a password on your BIOS. The BIOS settings can be password protected and you are able to reset this password by removing the watch battery. The BIOS password is great for if you're in a secure environment and you need to maybe disable some devices such as USB. And just as an extra, the battery in your system is good for three years without power. And while the system is on, it will use the system power. But when you turn your computer off and unplug it, it will actually switch to the battery power. For this little circuit that keeps track of time, memory, and any other settings in your BIOS. When you first turn on your computer, the BIOS is the one that administers what's called a post test. Oh, that's kind of redundant because it actually means power on self test. And the power on self test checks all the devices that are linked to the BIOS. And if any ROMs are attached to the BIOS, meaning read only memory programs that are attached to the BIOS, it will check those as well. Basically, it's going to check every device that's connected to the motherboard and take, for example, this little wireless receiver, if it was short circuiting, it, it might cause the BIOS to fail its post. If a device is short circuiting within the motherboard, such as your RAM is put in wrong, um, the BIOS will fail its post and then the system will not start up. You don't want to start up a system with a failing device. That's just no good. So the power on self-test is a very important thing for every computer to pass and it shows that all the devices connected are working or at least are able to get by. The BIOS is able to throw some other errors such as the keyboard malfunctioning or maybe the hard disk is not found or um, it tried to read the hard disk and it just wasn't working. So after your computer finishes its post and everything passes and everything works, it will start looking for what's called a boot sector. If you have a boot manager installed, which is probably what you have if you have an operating system installed, the boot manager starts with a specific line of code. And if when the BIOS is searching for it, it finds it, it will then load a bunch of stuff to RAM, and then the CPU will start executing the program known as your operating system. This is an important part of your BIOS and booting to devices and getting anything done, really. If you couldn't boot anything, well, your computer would basically be a brick. So here we have a nice picture to really explain all the concepts we've gone over today. Up here, you have your applications. If you're watching this in Google, in Google Chrome, then right here is Chrome. Chrome has a standard way to talk to your operating system through what's called an API, Application Programming Interface. This is a standard way that Chrome, Firefox, Adobe Premiere, and whatever else you have installed on your program, on your operating system, can talk to the operating system. Now Windows has a standard way to talk to the BIOS. And that might be through just BIOS or the UEFI interface. Um, the idea is that Windows and your BIOS have a standard way to talk to each other. And these are connected through a standard way. If you have a non-standard device, this might be like a Logitech C920 that doesn't exactly have its own firmware and it doesn't have its own BIOS or ROM chip to really look at. 
Windows will, it won't be able to use it until the device drivers are loaded. Device drivers are a common way that Windows can talk to them. And then the device drivers will, which is a program that drives the, so the hardware, it will then convert that to the hardware and send C920 to maybe autofocus or receive data from it. You gotta think that for all levels of this, communication goes both ways. And then here we have the BIOS, which is going to control the hardware. The BIOS, this is not a standard communication. The BIOS had to be made because we can't make a new operating system for every new piece of hardware. That's just not practical. And if we're gonna assemble a bunch of pieces of hardware such as a CPU, RAM, memory, address controller, interrupt controller, um, PCH, um, all other related things, we have to create a standard way that the operating system can talk to it all. That's what the BIOS is, if it's in here. If your device has firmware, so I know a lot of higher end graphics cards have their own ROM that can be read to. This makes them usable by default and we can just put a generic display on there. The ROM is linked to the BIOS and this acts as a unified system. That way the operating system can talk to our, to the firmware of our graphics card, which is right now a generic display driver. Once I install the actual device drivers, for the graphics card, Windows has a much better communication to it. But just know that devices might include their own firmware, their own ROM to link to the BIOS for Windows to talk to them until the appropriate device drivers are installed. Application, operating system, firmware, BIOS, and then the hardware. Everything kind of links down into the hardware. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the UEFI. This is called the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. The UEFI system is an improvement to the BIOS. It still serves all of the same basic functions as the BIOS. However, it has corrected some errors and some exploits that have appeared over the years, such as rootkits, which is maybe as some malicious code that hides in the boot sector portion of the computer, the UEFI also supports drives of much higher capacity. Think drives that are bigger than two terabytes. The UEFI provides just nice plug and play support for those drives without having to load some drivers. The UEFI also supports secure boot, which will check all the drivers for the devices that you're using and make sure that they're working, they're signed, and that there's no exploits found on the devices that are connected to your computer. An example could be, I might try to install some bad code to read everything that you type in your keyboard. And to do that, I might flash the keyboard ROM and put in some bad code. That way I can store it all for myself and look at it later. Well, Secure Boot alleviates that problem of, you know, malicious code hiding where we might never see it. And your antivirus would never see it as well. Your antivirus is trained to look at your storage device, not really at your BIOS. UEFI is a great improvement and is something that you'll see. And not to mention, anytime you boot into the UEFI, you're gonna find a nice interface. BIOS used to look really gross. It was like this horrible, blindingly blue light and there was like some yellow involved. Now we have the UEFI interface and I gotta say, I love it, I'm a fan. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video has taught you about a BIOS and what it does and the core functions that it performs within your computer. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It means a lot.